Good afternoon and happy Monday to those of you watching. I hope that you all are doing well. The Northeast is going to be experiencing some significant winter weather, and that's why we're here. Now, when I show you these forecasts, these graphics, these things, I don't want you to actually pay super close attention to the locations right now. I'll show you why in just a minute, but just know that in the Northeast, we're expecting a significant winter weather system to be moving through. So snow is currently exiting the Midwest, and this is going to, the same system is going to form into a nor'easter tonight, heading into tomorrow, moving into the northeast. Significant travel issues are expected with this as it moves into the northeast. The winter storm severity index getting up to major over a rather large portion of the northeast. Again, though, we could see this shift significantly. Coastal flooding is likely. That's due to significant wave heights that are going to be increasing uh, to six, maybe even 10 feet, somewhere along those lines. Not super high, not something super concerning or alarming. However, it is enough that I did want to get your attention with it. This system has unusually large uncertainty. That's why I'm telling you to take this with a grain of salt. A lot of the stuff that I'm about to show you will show this corridor of where those major travel impacts will be. That those could be significantly farther south than currently forecasted. I'll show you some things that might lend credence to that, but we'll just have to see what exactly happens. We'll have much more information by tomorrow morning. Hopefully we'll be able to get a brief YouTube short, if nothing else, out tomorrow morning with a forecast update on this. So here's the system right now. We have winter weather advisories with some wintry mix that's going on in the Midwest that's stretching all the way from the Arkansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Tennessee border up near Ohio. We have flood watches in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina with regard to the system as well. That could also produce a bit of severe weather. We'll just have to see. And then we have those winter storm warnings stretching throughout most of our major winter storm severity index um, areas up in the Northeast that's stretching all the way from near Scranton, Pennsylvania, all the way off through Massachusetts off the coast into the Atlantic. So here are those weather alerts in more detail. Winter storm warnings in the pink, winter weather advisories in the purple. Winter weather advisories mean that significant winter weather impacts are expected that could be inconvenient to you. It's when you get into that winter storm warning that things could start to get disruptive in terms of what this winter weather event could do. That's in terms of travel. That's in terms of um safety that's in terms of things of that nature so make sure that you're prepared for this winter weather event as it moves in tomorrow we'll have some more details on that later in the video particularly with how to travel safely so let's talk about winds first this is the coastal flooding this is the less complicated part of the forecast we're expecting wind gusts to be 40 50 miles an hour along the coast um 25 30 miles an hour of it inland of where this system is going to be some of our more mountainous regions and the Appalachians could also see those 40, 50, perhaps even 60 mile per hour wind gusts. But for those of us that are closer to sea level inland, 20, 30, maybe even 40 mile per hour wind gusts, um, 40 to 50 along the coast. So here is the projected snow courtesy of the weather service that we're seeing. And big notable thing here is that corridor of over half a foot of snow stretching from central Pennsylvania off the Massachusetts coastline. Now I want to show you a weather model. This is the European weather model. And you'll notice this has significantly less snow and it has it in uh, significantly lower amounts. So this has snow not even cracking half a foot across the majority of the area, with New Jersey in particular being the biggest impacted area. That band of snow moving south, and again, that weather service map showing that moving north, the southern side of the state of New Jersey not getting much snow at all, and over half a foot of snow overspreading Pennsylvania all the way off through New Hampshire, Massachusetts, over a foot there in the maroon. So again, I just want to show you that stark contrast. And another weather model here. This is a pretty reliable one, the high-resolution rapid refresh. This one also also showing that significantly farther south track and less snowfall. So this is showing us about half a foot of snow, but that swath now starts in Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, moves through most of the state in New Jersey, Massachusetts, uh, which was kind of the bullseye in the weather service forecast, not much in this at all, really. And we see this yet again with the North American model. This is kind of a, a combination of the European and the high resolution rapid refresh. But we've been seeing this trend farther and farther and farther south with time throughout the day today and yesterday with these snow bands and, and less and less snow. And there's some credence to that. We're seeing a less and less amplified, if you will, upper level weather system. And that's causing us to see a more southerly track and impacts that are slightly lessened, slightly less snow, um, slightly weaker winds, things of that nature. So we'll have to see, but the forecast is rapidly changing and we're just about a day out, if not a little less, from this starting to move in. So 
lots of uncertainty. This could very easily shift right back north, but I just want to drive home that there's a lot of uncertainty here, and this is rapidly shifting. So I'm going to show you another weather model. This is the global forecast system. This is a lower resolution, but still fairly reliable weather model. And I want to show you how this has changed um, with time. So the first frame of the loop I'm about to show you will show what the weather model was expecting a few days ago with this snowstorm. And then the last frame, when you see things pause for a little bit, that's what the latest um, run of this model, the latest version of this shows. So we start with a significant snow corridor in northern Pennsylvania heading into New York being the bullseye. And that holds for a while and even shifts north a little bit. Then we see things start to shift south and we start to see Massachusetts as more of our bullseye, which is what the current weather service forecast shows. But in the end, we again start to see things creep more into New Jersey, creep more into Connecticut and Rhode Island. And we start to see that shift more what some of the other models I just showed you are indicating. So again, we have that very southerly shift, that southernmost shift that we were talking about before. We have that southerly shift on all of our weather models. But what we're seeing from the Weather Service is this much farther north um, snow band. And, and this is most certainly possible. Things could shift back. But the trends have been, and the Weather Service has also been creeping this south, that things are going to be south of this. So that's what I'm expecting, is that we're going to see things a bit south of this, maybe not quite as far south as the models are anticipating. I think there is a possibility that they're overdoing just how weak this upper level system that's driving this could be by the time it arrives. But there's a real possibility that a lot of these areas, especially like New Hampshire, Vermont, you could see very little snow out of this. So we'll just have to see. This isn't to say you shouldn't be preparing or taking this seriously. This is to say there's a large amount of uncertainty. So everyone that's in this weather service forecast should be preparing for significant snow. But if these models, if you're in significant snow in these model forecasts, these projections, I wouldn't be shocked to see the weather service shift this southward with time. So I'd suggest that you also prepare for this, not only so you can be prepared for the current situation, but also because we're probably going to see a few more winter systems here before winter is over, and some of those could bring impacts to you anyway. Never a bad idea to be prepared for winter storms up in the northeast. So let's get started with the timing of this. That there's pretty good agreement on. It's where exactly the storm's going to track. That agreement gets a bit meager. So here we are. This is 14 hours out from a model run that happened at noon today central, 1 o'clock eastern. So this here, this is, um, <clears throat> this is 3 a.m. eastern time, 3 a.m. So around 3 a.m., that's when we start to see snow really moving in to uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And again, that could be a little farther south, could be a little farther north. This is going to be wobbly. This is going to move. We're going to see that heaviest snow really start to move through. And again, this could be farther north. The Weather Service, again, forecasting this being significantly farther north than the models right now. So we'll just have to see what happens there. But this is around um, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is when we're going to see our heaviest snow in the northeast overall. Just blanket statement, doesn't matter where you are, your heaviest snow will likely happen around 10 a.m. tomorrow. The heaviest snow will have passed by the time we get to around 2, 3 p.m. tomorrow. And we'll start to see the system move offshore. And then most of the snow, if not all of it, driven by that system will be well and out of here by the time we get to around 8, 9 p.m. Some lake effect snow on the back end of this, certainly a possibility. But this system, it, the models are going to shift it north and south. I'm currently favoring the southern side because, again, we know as people um, the reasons for that shift. And that's that weaker upper level system, perhaps. And I, that, that might be why our severe weather system underperformed yesterday. Well, it, We'll stop it there. We could make a whole video on that in and of itself. When it comes to preparing for this thing, um, ice and snow, take it slow. That's the biggest thing I can say. Make sure that you're driving more slowly than usual. Everything is slowing down. That's hit the gas slower. Don't just slam it on the throttle. That's hit the brakes sooner. Um, that's uh, making sure that you are you have a larger distance between you and the next cars, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you're not using cruise control. You have absolute control over your car in as many ways as you can. And finally, make sure that your vehicle's clean before driving. We don't want people having snow hitting their windshields. That can be distracting. It can also reduce visibility for you. So it's always good to make sure that you're keeping track of that stuff. 
Well, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I know that it, it might get a little confusing talking about the uncertainty with the system, but it's very important to drive home that this is probably going to change even though we're less than a day out. So please stay tuned to us, stay tuned to your local weather officials and make sure that you're preparing for this event if you're in the Northeast. So that way, no matter what happens, you're prepared. If there's less snow than expected, then whoop de doo that's wonderful. Your commute's gonna be better. Um, things are gonna go more according to plan. If there's more snow than usual and you prepare, then look at that. You prepared early, you know <clears throat> you were weather aware, you knew what to do, and now you're not paying as big a price. So please like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, I know there will probably be some. Leave those in the comments below. You can also check out our Discord server where we'll be discussing this, uh, both in the Advective Weather team, but also with our general weather community over there. So thanks again for watching. I hope this video was enjoyable and it was clear how the uncertainty is for this event. If you have any ideas for how we can make these better in the future, please again leave those in the comments below. With that being said, please have a great rest of your Monday. Stay safe out there.